This is part eight of Blowing Winds of Destiny, and our subtitle is Revival Glory on the Path of Destiny. Revival Glory on the Path of Destiny. Second Peter chapter one, we're gonna be looking at verse 19 through 21. Let's read. And so we have the prophetic word confirmed, which you, which you do well to heed as a light shining in dark places until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your heart. Now listen to what he says. He says, let's go back and I want you to hear, because these words are vitally important. And so we have the prophetic word. It's been spoken. And the prophetic word has been confirmed, which you do well to take heed. A light that shines in the darkness until the dawn, till the day dawns, and the morning star rises in our heart. Well, what would be the day dawns and the morning star? When the revelation becomes illuminated, when you get a revelation of what God has really said, it's illuminated in your soul and it becomes alive in your spirit, then that is the prophetic word you believe. Then you become established on that word and then you prosper from the word. Verse 20, knowing this first, that no prophecy of scriptures of any private interpretation. Yes. If it doesn't line up with the word, drop it like it's hot. Yes. If the concept doesn't line up with what the word says, drop it like it's hot. Just forget it. Yes. That's not what the word of the Lord says. It's not in the heart and the mind of God what God says about me. I remember several years ago, a woman came to the church. And uh, she was in our Mighty X ministry for some time. And she went to somebody's church and she got a word from a prophet. So she said. And the prophet told her she was going to hell and she would never be forgiven of her sins. And so she believed. In other words, the prophet spoke those words. We call it charismatic witchcraft. And he spoke those words and he cast a spell on her. And it entered into her heart and she could not get over uh, uh, believing that God hadn't forgiven for her sins. And she would call and call. An apostle lion called me to his office one day and he says, can you please help this woman? The devil is tormenting her mind. And then we spent about two hours, Pastor Miriam and I, with this dear woman. And she says, I just can't be forgiven. I'm going to go to hell. I'm just going to go to hell. And she would weep and cry, weep and cry. And I would show her scripture and I would command that demon. I said, demon, stop talking to her. And then I finally said, who are you? Who are you? And the demon spoke back to me and said, I'm a lying spirit in her mouth and she lets me be here. That's just how he said it. And so we began to take authority over that. It became a strong man that, that, that had this lie embedded into her soul that she could not be forgiven because it was spoken out of the mouth of what she called a man, a prophet. Are you listening to what I'm saying to you? Why? Because her spirit was open to receive. And so it was spirit to spirit, not flesh to flesh, not just nonsense words, but spirit to spirit. You are spirit beings. You understand that? You have a spirit and you become the host where Holy Spirit comes and your spirit becomes the host that hosts Holy Spirit. And also your body becomes the host that holds demons. You host demonic spirits when you give them a place into your temple. So Peter says this, verse tw 21. He says, for, for prophecy never came by the will of men. In other words, it wasn't by, it wasn't expired by men, but by holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit, not by any other spirit, but they were moved by the Holy Spirit. The wisdom of God only comes from long obedience in the same direction. It only comes from long time obedience moving in the same direction. The price of revival fire starts with having a vision and an understanding of our desired need 
to see God's kingdom come and his will be done in power. In the book of Proverbs chapter 16, Proverbs chapter 16, verse 9, these words. In his heart, a man plans his course. In other words, you go to school, you go to college, you learn, you feel, I'm going to be this, I'm going to be a technician of this, I'm going to be a technician of that, I'm going to be a doctor, I'm going to be a garbage uh, truck driver, I mean, whatever it is. So you go to school and you plan your own course, but the Lord determines your steps. But the Lord determines your steps. Notice the word steps in Proverbs. God never said that he would direct our leaps, but our steps. There are no shortcuts to destiny. There's no shortcuts to destiny that God has for you and he has for me. He leads us step by step, day by day, through tribulation, fiery trials, revelation, and character building opportunities as he moves us to fulfill our purpose and arrive in our predetermined destination. The journey prepares, the journey prepares us for visitation, habitation, and in our destination. The vision is free, but the journey isn't. The dream is free, but the journey isn't. The word, the prophetic word received is free, but the journey there isn't. Turn to the gospel of Mark. Mark gospel chapter 10. Mark's gospel chapter 10. We're going to begin at verse 46. In Mark's gospel chapter 10, beginning with verse 46. Now, as they came to Jericho, as he went out of Jericho with his disciples and a great multitude, blind Barnabas, the son of Timaeus, sat by the roadside begging. And when he had heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And then many warned him to be quiet, but he cried out all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. So Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. And then they called the blind man, saying to him, Be of good cheer, arise. He is calling for you. He is calling for you. And throwing aside his garment, he arose and he came to Jesus. For Jesus answered, remember, every miracle begins with a conversation. So Jesus answered and said to him, what do you want me to do for you? And the blind man said to him, Rabboni, that I might receive my sight. Then Jesus said to him, go your way for your faith has made you well. I want you to hear that. He says, go your way because your faith has made you well. And immediately he received his sight and he followed Jesus on the road. Now turn to Matthew's gospel, chapter 20. Matthew gives us another account of this story. That's why when you see in the beginning of each one of these gospel accounts, it would say, uh, 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 this Matthews according to, or the account according to Matthews, or the account according to uh, Mark or Luke. In other words, each one of these writers wrote as they saw it. Each one of these writers wrote as they heard it. There was no contradictory in how they seen it or heard it. So in the 20th chapter of Matthew, beginning with verse 29, now, as they went out of Jericho, a great multitude followed him. And behold, two blind men, not just one now, two blind men, sat by the road, and when they heard that Jesus was passing by, they cried out, Have mercy on us, O Lord, son of David. And then the multitude warned them that they should be quiet. But they cried out all the more, saying, Have mercy on us. 
O Lord, son of David. And so Jesus stood still and he called them and said, what do you want me to do for you? And they said to him, Lord, that our eyes might be open. And so Jesus had compassion on them, touched their eyes, and immediately their eyes received sight and they followed him immediately. In the book of Ephesians chapter 1, Ephesians chapter 1, from the New American Standard Bible, I'm going to read from verse 18. Ephesians chapter 1. I pray that the eyes of your heart, everybody say the eyes of your heart, may be enlightened so that you might know the hope of his calling. Now I want you to hear that. I'm going to read it to you and I want you to hear it from my mouth. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened that, that you will know what is the hope of his calling and what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints and what is the surpassing greatness of his power towards us who believe. The eyes of your heart or the eyes of your spirit can catch sight and comprehend and comprehend the deepest things of the kingdom, the hope of Jesus' is calling. There are many things that are better caught than taught. There are things that you have to catch instead of understand with your mind. The first time that Barnabas was mentioned in the scriptures, a tag preceded his inheritance. A stigma, a stereotype, a name preceded his inheritance. He was the son of Timaeus. His condition was mentioned before his name was mentioned. Anybody ever call you something before they called you your name? Hmm. <laughs> No comment. <laughs> Moving forward. The objective blind person was used to qualify him. Blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus. Not Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus. It was blind Bartimaeus. So, his condition was mentioned before his inheritance, the son of Timaeus. His condition was mentioned before his name. The objective blind person was used to qualify him. You know, when I was growing up in my neighborhood, we had a little girl that moved down on the corner. Her name was Teresa. We used to call her Fat Teresa. And I would go down to her house, you know, because we all go, we kind of met at the corner, and we would go, all go down to the sand pile, you know, where we'd play, you know, king, king of the hill. Right. You know, so when you got at the king of the hill, everybody tried to run up the hill, try to pull you down. Right. So I was always the victor. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and Patricia couldn't make it because she would always slide in the sand. So we would go down to her house, you know. And so when she moved in the neighborhood, her mother worked at the day, so we would always go down to her house and hang out. Well, her mother didn't work one day. And so when I got up on the porch, her mother came to the door. She looked at me, said, well, whose son are you? And I says, well, I live down the street, and, 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 and my parents are son. said, well, get off my porch. Don't come back to my house. You see, I was known by my family's condition, not by my name. You see, when I was a kid, the people didn't think well of your family. They didn't think well of you. 
So the objective blind person was used to qualify him. He was addressed first by his condition and his condition seemed to be stronger than his willpower to overcome it. His power of choice was restricted by his condition. You're blind. How can I give a blind man a job? You're handicapped. How can I give you a job? You can't run this machinery. You're unlearned. What can you do? You are a Christian. I see you put that down. You can't work here. Everybody's accepted here. Or oh, if you work at the polls, you can't talk to people about what you believe. You can't talk to people about what you believe, where you stand, who you choose, who you think is the best candidate. You can't do that because you are a Christian. And they told them, him, be quiet. Don't trouble the master. But there was a greater hope inside of Barnabas. Those religious minds said within themselves, the earth cannot bear up under someone who was destitute. Who want to follow an ex-murderer? Who want to listen to somebody who's been in prison? The earth Cannot bear up under somebody like you, Jonathan. Someone who was once a pauper. Someone who now declares he's a king. They said, do not trouble the master. Just hang yourself and die. Don't trouble the master. There's no place in God's kingdom for people like you. But his longing in his heart to see matched his desired faith. Bonamea saw more in his darkness than those Jews who told him to be quiet in their sight. Yes. Bonamea refused to be reduced to the environment around him, but he continued to cultivate the vision that was inside of him. Yes. I'll live and not die. That's what Arlene said. I'll live and not die. This cancer won't live in my body. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in this world. In the book of Proverbs chapter 13, Proverbs chapter 13, verse 12 from the Passion Translation reads this way. When hope's dreams seems to drag on and on, the delay can be depressing. But when at last your dream comes true, life's sweetness will satisfy your soul. In the book of Psalms, chapter 27, Psalms chapter 27, beginning with verse 13 and 14 from the Amplified, these words. I would have despaired had I not believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for and confidently expect the Lord. Be strong and let your heart take courage. Yes, wait. Wait for and confidently expect the Lord. You know, it's something amazing about this story with Barnabas because he said, son of David. You see, Barnabas knew being a Jew, he understood the covenant promise of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And he understood that God was the God who said, my mercies are new every single day. And he knew he was a child of the covenant. And he said, son of David, you're the Messiah. We've been waiting for you. Have mercy on me. You are a child of God. You get up every morning and say, Jesus, Messiah, son of David. 
Have mercy on my daughter. Have mercy on my son. Have mercy on my parents. Have mercy on my spouse. Have mercy on me. I'm a covenant child of God. Hmm. Bartimaeus, he heard his destiny coming down the road. He knew this was his Kairos moment. This was the moment that he was born for. That moment. He heard Jesus coming down. His, his, his purpose was coming down the road. His destiny was coming down the road. His life was coming down the road. His sight was coming down the road. Jesus, son of David, he knew it. He threw that garment off and said, nothing today is my Kairos moment. He knew that his current position did not reflect his disposition. And he cried out all the more. Yes. Yes. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Yes. That day Jesus converted his deliverance into freedom, his hope into sight. Yes. Yes. Destiny always demands a mentality. And it takes a hearing to access your miracle. I said it takes a hearing to access your miracle. A person can only say what they heard. If there is no hearing, there can be no saying. And somewhere along the line, Bartimaeus knew that there was a waiting Messiah that was coming. Can you imagine people setting you on the road every day to beg? Can you imagine your family picking you up, walking you down to the road to beg? But let's keep the story straight because they didn't take these two to any road. They took these two to the road that, that the priest walked on, hoping that one day one priest would stop. Can you imagine sitting on the road and all the preachers walk by and nobody touch you? Can you imagine sitting in a conference and they've got all the preachers on the first two rows and they wheel you in and you're in the row 17 in the back. But all the preachers had to walk by you to get to the first two rows, but nobody touched you. Can you imagine that? So they brought these two men, and they set them on the road. Didn't say they were sitting there with a multitude, just these two. And they set them on the road that all the priests would come like Palm Sunday, like today. That's the road Jesus walked on. And they laid their palms down for him to walk on. But that day, he was set on the right road, at the right time, at the right place. And Jesus converted his blindness into sight. Barnabas has heard his deliverer and his solution and his provider coming. And he understood that the restoration of his sight was connected to his hearing and his mouth. He understood that his miracle was connected to his hearing and his mouth. If I would believe in my heart and confess with my mouth. He understood the connection. You get a lot of people that say, I believe it, I believe it, I believe it, but they don't believe it in their heart. And when he heard, when he heard what he believed, coming down the road, he opened his mouth. I said, when he heard what he believed, 
coming down the road. He heard his miracle coming. Did you hear what I said? And he was ready to host his miracle that day. Hmm. He was ready that day. And he cried out all the more. Son of David, have mercy on me. Someone once said, life doesn't give you what you want, but you have to demand it. Life doesn't give you what you want, but you have to demand it. Son of David, have mercy on me. It was a demand. And he called for it. Life doesn't give you what you wish for, but what you fight for. Amen. Barnabas never turned loose of his hope and his faith. He never turned loose of it. When hopelessness is not put in check, it becomes a death sentence. Hopelessness is a learned behavior. Did you hear what I said? I said hopelessness is a learned behavior. And if you don't keep it in check, it'll become a death sentence. The Apostle Paul says, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. And I have kept the faith. 2 Timothy 4, 7. And in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 12, Paul the Apostle also wrote these words. He says, fight the good fight of faith. The, fighting the good fight of faith is a, is a fight that you win. It's not a fight that you lose. That's why he called it a good fight. Fight the good fight of faith. And then he says, lay hold. Lay hold of eternal life, which you were, were also called to have confessed with a good conscience in the presence of many witnesses. Lay hold of it. Bartimaeus laid hold that day. He laid hold of his miracle. Are you listening to me? Why? Because his destiny was in his miracle. I have fought for everything I ever had in my life. I have to fight for it. I lived the life of disgrace and I have to answer for it by grace. So have you. We must rise and we must contend for whatsoever is contending for my freedom. That's what you have to fight for. For whatever is contending, whatever is contending for your destiny that God promised you, you have to fight the good fight of faith for it. And then you have to lay hold of it. Don't let it walk past you. Bonamaeus didn't let it walk past him. Son of David! I was in Stateville Prison. And we was in F Block. F Block is the round house in Stateville. That's where uh, uh, nobody gets out of F Block. Everybody there is going to die. They're going to die. Everybody in F Block. It's a round, circular building. They call it F Block. And I was there with some more ministers' ministry. I heard a cry down the gallery Hey! Hey, preacher! Hey! Hey, where's that other preacher at? Where's that other preacher at? And the guy was telling me, well, I'm here. I can talk to you. No, where's that other preacher at? And he said, well, he's down there talking to somebody. Tell him to come here. He said, hey, man, hey. It's okay. So I finally got down into him. He said, you, you the preacher that was here last month. Somebody told me you were praying for people. He said, pray for me. I said, what do you believe in God for? He had his eyes closed. <laughs> he had his shirt real tight, you know. He said, just pray for me. And, and, and I said, well, what do you believe in God for? Pray, preacher! I said, God, help him in Jesus' name. And I went to the next cell. <laughs> you can't stay long with people like that. 
You don't, you don't, you don't stay long with people. I did it and moved on. <laughs> so we must rise and we must contend for whatsoever and whosoever contends for our freedom and our deliverance, our healing and our destiny, and the promised destiny of our children's children. You have to rise and contend for it. We must raise the shield of faith over the double doors of our promise. Raise the shield of faith. Every Christian was born a warrior. So Paul the apostle said, I fought a good fight. And so we must rise and raise our shields of faith over these doors of promise because they're God's promise to you. And God wants you to have every single thing that he's promised you. Every Christian was born a warrior. Every Christian. You know that Jesus birthed the church at a very difficult time. The disciples was up in the upper room. They was hiding out from fear of the Jews. Jerusalem was absolutely in chaos. And they had killed the Lord. Now think of that. They had killed the Lord. And what makes it even worse than that? He get up. They sit in the upper room for fear, and Jesus comes walking through the door. Now, now I'd have left out of that then, but I'm just saying for me, you know, I, man, look, he come walking through that door, that had done it for me. All, of, all those miracles was fine, but when he walked through that door, I'd have found my way up out of there. So, but he comes walking through the door, and he speaks peace to them, and he comforts their heart. Now, now, keep in mind, they went to the tomb to look for him. He wasn't there. And now they're up there praying, and Jesus walks through the door. And Thomas missed church that day. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> he missed church that day, and the Lord come. So when he come back around, they say, hey, Thomas, we saw the Lord. No. <laughs> Your miracle showed up, and you missed it. No. It is our destiny to be assaulted. It is your destiny to be assaulted. And it is your duty to conquer. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. So don't think it's strange when people don't like you. Don't bother me a bit. People don't like me, I don't care. When I was a sinner, they didn't like me, so it don't make no difference. They didn't like me then, they don't like me now. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm happy when people like me, but I ain't losing no sleep over it. When I go to sleep, I'm out. You understand that? I don't think about nobody. Who, who goes to sleep worried about somebody liking them? Raise your hand. I'm gonna pray for you. <laughs> can you understand? And then you can do about it. So faith is an enforcer. It enforces what is not seen, and it, is, it enforces what is not seen, and it makes it seen. In the movie Spartan, Spartan, the mother said to her son, when he went out to war, take care that you return with your shield or up on it. Take care that you return with your shield or up on it. Barnabas was born into an inheritance, just like you and I. We were born into an inheritance. And that promised inheritance birthed a vision inside of him called hope that he never let go of. He never let go. I'm going to stop there this morning, but I want you to understand as we begin to move closer into these end times we are living in. These are the end times. Not the last days yet, but the end times. And God promised, I don't know when and I don't know how, but he said he's going to pour out his spirit upon all flesh. And I believe we're that close to revival glory. I believe we're that close to seeing signs and wonders manifest like never before in your workplace. And you'll do nothing. You, your presence will release it. And these signs will follow them that believe in my name. 
I'm believing that you'll pray for people with a simple prayer and the power of God will heal them. I know that you will embrace and shake hands with people and the power of God will leave out of you and touch their bodies. Why? Because this is a house of miracles. And you're going to carry those miracles wherever you go. That is how he's going to pour out his spirit in these last days on all flesh. You're going to be the conduit from which the supernatural power of an almighty God flows through. You say, well, I'm not, I don't feel spiritual. It has nothing to do with how you feel. That's been your problem all your life based on how you feel. You got married on how you feel. Only to woke up and say, oh my God, what have I done? <laughs> Try getting another feeling <laughs> with your bad self. <laughs> So stand to your feet, let's pray, be dismissed. Father, we thank you for this wonderful body of believers. Yes. They are strong in the Lord and in your mighty power. I thank you that the miraculous is stirred up inside of them. Yes. Miracles will flow out of them. Compassion and mercy will flow out of them. And your presence will be their rear guard to bring yes. glory and honor to yes. your name. I ask you to bless this people. Bless them in their todays and all of their tomorrows. Lord, I pray that they will prosper and that you will multiply and increase them in very tangible ways. And then, Lord, I ask you to bless their children's children for a thousand generations. If you were the Terry God, may they walk in your prosperity. May they know your love. May they honor you in their homes and around their tables and in their lives. And I thank you for this people of yours. In the wonderful name of the Lord Jesus Christ, amen. God bless you.